Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Unchauskas. Today is the 3rd of April 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's um, afternoon session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, also just before we jump in, uh, as always, let's quickly have a uh, remind ourselves, uh, let's quickly remind ourselves with um, about our JFD Bank uh, YouTube channel here. Uh, you can always subscribe to it um, in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our uh, JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on uh, on JFDBank.com and click on the research tab right there. Um, now then, uh, quickly a quick update on what's happening here globally uh, in in regards to the coronavirus. Now, this this was the figure from this morning, and let me just quickly up, update this one. Refresh it, the page. And uh, of course, well, we have, well, of course, it has grown. The number of in infected has grown, and probably the number of deaths has grown as well. So, well, I mean, but um, I can see that for now, it's either, it, uh, yeah, it has grown a little bit here. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, still, the situation is not really good here. So. Um, Basically, guys, for now, stay safe. Try to try to keep yourself healthy. Let's put it that way. This is probably this the simple way of putting it. Uh, right now, then, uh, let's jump into the charts. Uh, quick, uh, quickly. So here, the S and P five hundred. Um, now, looking at the S and P five hundred, then looking at the cash index where it is right now the cash index is currently slightly above the 2500 and uh, well 2500 zone so basically it's below the yesterday's close um, so it's just basically not far from this downside line so you can see that uh, yesterday, this downside line uh, kind of remained intact. I mean, it depends how you draw it. Um, I mean, some it could be a little bit uh, inaccurate, I would say. So mainly, what I was I was talking about: keep your eyes on some of these key support and resistance levels. So um, as you can see, yesterday the area here, this 2,454 zone that I talked about previously uh, this week, and uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this one because if we see a drop and we see a close below this, then yes, we could consider some deeper extensions to the downside. But however, you can see that uh, it didn't happen. Uh, although we did get a drop here uh, on Wednesday uh, below this little territory, but um, still it remained above it. And uh, yesterday we saw a nice push higher. However, it still remained near this downside line. So again, looking at the, as I said, looking at the cash index, the cash index is uh, around here basically currently. So um, it will be quite interesting to see if we can push higher higher and if we can, you can see a strong break above this downside line but preferably of course uh, as I've mentioned previously that uh, ideally for us is uh, we need to see a break above the 2637 zone and uh, not only a break but also uh, a nice uh, at least a daily candle well not, not at least not at least but a daily close above this territory here above the 2637 if so then yes there it could increase the chances of a potential kind of a larger correction to the upside because for now uh, still any move higher here could be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling because we do have some key areas of resistance here above but <coughs> excuse me but again like I said guys for now we're keeping a close eye on these two levels the 2637 on the upside and the 2454 on the downside <coughs> uh, now then WTI oil so 
Uh, this is what I talked about this morning and what I was saying that we needed to see a nice good push above the um, 26.08 level again in order to kind of aim for higher levels um, and ideally we need to see a nice good daily close above this so uh, let's see how this day is going to end because if we see a nice daily close above the territory then yep it increases the chances of a potential larger correction to the upside of course, uh, one of the barriers to overcome will be this 21 EMA on the daily chart. Um, and if it, if that one gets overcome, then the, uh, the, uh, the next target to consider is around the 30.17 or the 30. 34.75 zone so yep keep your eyes on this one again uh don't get me wrong any kind of larger extensions to the upside for now um as long as it remains below the uh below the uh downside line here below this downside line then yes uh, any kind of extension to the upside here could be seen as a temporary correction uh, temporary correction before another leg of selling so that's why keep this idea in mind guys uh, again for now uh, we are um, of course leaning more towards the upside in the short run because we have managed to climb uh, back above the 26.08 zone but as you can see it's approaching the the 21 day EMA here let's see how this is going to play out but if that is no uh kind of no match for the bulls then a further move higher could be possible uh, now then, uh, DXY, very quick update on this. I mean, I talked about this one this morning, and this morning we were still hanging around here, but what I was saying that, um, in a way, we could see this one drifting uh, further north today. Now, by the way, just uh, just to kind of remind you guys that we got the uh, non-farm payroll numbers that came out, and to be honest, <clears throat> those were a huge disappointment, uh, coming out at 700 and 701k versus uh, versus the um, hundred minus hundred one uh, 100k expected. So basically, the um, it, it well it it fell well below the well below the expectation. And um, if I'm not mistaken, let me just quickly double check something. I think it's it has been the lowest it has been. It's I. Um, yes, it has been. It's the lowest figure ever um, that it has been, guys. Now, um, it even uh, surpassed the, uh, the the figure which was seen in. Um, let me just quickly double check this in 2009 April 2009 when the figure and the uh, the reading fell to minus 699k this one surpassed the uh, that figure and uh, well I mean this is not looking good here for uh, for uh, for the US economy um, but uh, yeah guys it is what it, it is what it is um, the US dollar here is accelerating higher now the reason why it's pushing higher is because in the, in, in problematic times like these, dollar sometimes uh, tends to put its safe haven suit, and uh, basically it attracts uh, attention. It attracts. It becomes as a safe haven currency. So uh, this is where what's happening right now. You can see that the dollar is accelerating, um, and uh, of course, for now, for now, we will continue aiming to the upside. Uh, our next potential target is around the 111. Oh, sorry, 101.15 zone. Uh, that's. Um, or actually, let me just double check this very quickly. Um, probably it's going to be a little bit higher here. Um, so it's going to be the 101.34 zone. That's basically the high of the... Um, that's the highest point of April 2017. Um, and uh, yep, that's going to be our first target. After that, if it continues to rise, then yep, higher levels could be met. But for now, this is going to be our main level, the 101.34. That's the highest point of 2017 April. Um, so yep, let's see how this is going to play out. For now, uh, we're more bullish than bearish on this one. Um, unless this starts dropping below this uh, short-term upside support line, taken from the low of the 30th of March and drops below this little territory right here around the 99.91 zone that I talked about previously. So um, for now, guys, keep your eyes on this one. Yes, uh, it is pushing higher. Um, let's see if it can actually go all the way higher here and maybe if, if it can go all the way back here to these uh, highs that we saw here in around mid-March. So 
Um, now then, jumping into euro dollar, this leads us into euro dollar, and of course, uh, logically, euro dollar is selling off. So um, the dollar is strengthening, and this is what I talked about this morning. Basically, what I was saying that uh, in a way, we could, there could be a possibility to see this one uh, traveling a little bit higher. However, if it struggles to do so, keep your eyes on this barrier here, the the low of yesterday, which was around the 1.0819 uh, area. You can see that the pair drifted below it, created a new lower low, and uh, got held near this target of ours around the 1.0777 uh, mark here. And uh, this level is the lowest point of February 2020. So basically, this is where currently the pair is finding support. Uh, don't get me wrong, we do have some good levels here underneath as well. Uh, but for now, uh, for now, it's um, it is it is getting a hold up near this uh, near this 1.0777 zone. Let's see if it can continue drifting further south. Um, and uh, we'll, of course, uh, for now we are more bearish than bullish, especially if it drops below this 1.0777. The next little target to consider could be around somewhere around here, basically the low of the 24th of March, and that's approximately around the 1.0744 mark. Now, we're not going to drag this one too much to the downside. We're going to go slowly, step by step, and uh, yep, uh, for now, like I said, that's going to be our main uh, target for now. Uh, now then, uh, EuroCAD. Now I do understand I'm I'm going through a little bit of a different uh, kind of uh, let's say sequence here, but just wanted to kind of show you uh, the first ones, the more the the more uh, the ones that kind of got uh, or should I say uh, the first one that got affected, of course, is the euro dollar. So that's why I wanted to jump into this one. So. Um, now then, another interesting pair from the Euro Euro uh, Euro side is the Euro CAD. Now um, here the situation is quite interesting because we are looking at this four-hour chart. We are at a critical spot, so. Um, we are near this key area of, of support. Basically, this is um, it's not a clear level here, but mainly a support zone. So. Um, of course, you could keep an eye on this 1.5245 territory, which is the high of the uh, 6th of March and also not far from the lows, uh, or should I say an intraday swing low of 20th of March and uh, also coincides with the 200 EMA on the 4-hour chart. So, um, other, in other words, we need to see a nice good clear break below this territory and to be honest, also a drop below the, um, let me just quickly highlight this area, um, not this one, but like this basically, and also a drop below the lowest point of March, um, oh, sorry, not the lowest point of March, but the low of the 20th of March, and if we do see a drop below this area as well, then yes, further declines are possible, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low, and we could start aiming for further declines, guys. Um, again, for now, uh, be very careful, uh, be very cautious, and uh, yes, keep your eyes on this highlighted area. If we see a four-hour candle closing below the 1.5207 uh, territory, which is the low, the lowest point of 20th of of March, then yes, uh, we will aim for further declines. For now, we are very careful and cautious because again, this is a very key, important area of support. If this gets broken, uh, if this gets broken, then uh, and we see the four-hour candle closing below this 1.5 5207 then yes we will aim for further declines um, jumping into another interesting pair which, which you probably don't look at very often that's euro uh, against the south african rand now lately i mean the south african rand has been the worst performer especially this year um, and if we look at the monthly chart here you can see how um, it, it, since probably around the 2000 this pair this currency continues to depreciate against the euro here and lately uh, it, it started off the year with a bang here I would say and uh, accelerated higher uh, don't get me wrong some probably some of you might see an opportunity here to short this one but again until we see a clear reversal signal like for example which we had here when we saw an acceleration here in 2015 uh, when the mm, or in January 2016 here uh, when it drifted higher sharply but then as you can see it um, the next month it this is a monthly chart by the way next month it kind of formed of a doji here and then uh, showed a reversal and we saw a drift lower so that's why be very careful yes we are pushing higher 
but let's wait for that confirmation uh, reversal signal and then we could aim for for some downside however it's a very tricky situation right now we are um, we are right now in difficult economic times and uh, the big question here is will the uh, South African economy withstand all the the coronavirus issues and of course this uh, the currency depreciation so let's see what kind of measures they will take um, I, unless the cent their central bank will have to inter intervene uh, well probably most likely it will it will do um, but uh, yeah, for now, guys, for now, it's um, it's very tricky here. Uh, probably the, and they will start trying to maybe increase their uh, interest rates. But um, yeah, for now, let's not over speculate on this too much. From the technical side, we can see that um, it continues to drift higher. Looking at this daily chart, you can see just it's 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 almost like uh, the U.S. dollar against the Singapore dollar, which I've I was showing you previously, guys. So. Um, yeah, for now, let's wait and see where uh, the potential little correction could come because for now any move lower could be seen as a temporary correction because uh, as long as it uh, from the technical side, as long as the uh, the pair continues to trade above this little upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 5th of March, then yes, we will continue aiming to the downside or to the upside. Uh, your, uh, sorry, GBP USD. Um, I talked about this one this morning and this is what I, exactly what I was talking about. Now, um, basically what I was saying that um, the pair was flagging out and potentially was showing it was a bullish flag. But what I was saying that don't rush into this yet because we need, we would like to see a break above this barrier here, the 1.2485 first um, in order to kind of aim for higher levels because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and more buyers could join in. Uh, because in a way, if, if we are seeing a nice bullish flag here um, and you can see that some probably traders have been in entering here and now they're getting stopped out if they have a small stop loss and uh, the pair is drifting lower the big question here is will it stay above this 1.2195 zone which is the lowest point of October uh, 2019 the big that's the good a good question here um, if it does if it gets a hold up here and it fails to uh, to move lower then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher still in that situation we will still wait for a break above the 1.2485 zone in order to aim for higher levels um, so yeah, keep your eyes on this one. If this suddenly drops below the 1.2195, um, <clears throat> I would say this all this territory will be somewhat of a neutral one for us because for us to get comfortable with lower levels on this one, we would need to see a drop below the 1.1950 territory. Yep, and then we could uh, aim for further declines. And to be honest, not only a drop below this, but ideally a close below the 1.1950. Uh, that's basically the lowest point of 2016. And... Um, uh, then yes, we could uh, consider further declines for now. It's just it could be seen as just a temporary correction. Uh, but yep, let's see how this is going to play out, guys. Um, USD CAD. Now um, this is what I talked about this morning, and let me just jump into a four-hour chart on this one. Um, so here, um, here I was talking about this downside line, which if continues to hold could uh, be a nice area of resistance for uh, for the bears to step in here and drive this one lower so along in other words if this uh, downside line continues to remain intact we could still see some downside and this is what happened and this is what I was talking about this morning so uh, because for us to get comfortable with higher levels on this one we would like to see a push above the 1.4325 territory somewhere around here and uh, ideally we would prefer to see maybe at, at least a four hour candle close above this area and then we could aim for higher levels but as you can see it didn't even the, the, pale, the, the pair is even failing to push above this downside line and uh, yep, now we are seeing a nice reversal. It tested this downside line today, and now it's reversing to the downside here. So uh, basically, long story short, of course, the don't get me wrong, the uh, the oil markets are helping the Canadian dollar here as well to strengthen. Um, and uh, yep, uh, as long as oil continues to push higher right now, we could see this one uh, drifting to the downside. And uh, but from the technical side, uh, for us to get comfortable with lower levels, now we could start looking at uh, the downside if we get a drop below this 1.40. 
75 territory here uh, but uh, just to get a little bit more comfortable with uh, further declines we would like to see at, at least a four hour candle close below the 1.3986 zone and then yes we could aim for deeper extensions to the downside for now until the pair is in this little territory, we will remain somewhat neutral. Uh, but if it breaks through one of these highlighted, highlighted areas, then yes, we will aim for a further directional move, a short-term directional move. So guys, I really hope you found it useful. And thank you very much for watching and listening. And thank you very much for uh, watching my videos this whole week and in general, uh, keeping up with me um, still yep I really appreciate that and I hope I hope you have a fantastic weekend guys if you're still trading uh, be very careful today's Friday and uh, well you've seen the numbers the NFP numbers they're not very um, great if we can put it that way um, but uh, yeah guys stay safe uh, be very careful uh, both health wise and market wise and uh, yep we'll catch up on Monday and uh, uh, catch my video on Monday uh, around six o'clock GMT time, um, and uh, then yes, uh, we'll we'll resume. We'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones as always, and uh, we'll see how we can position ourselves for uh, the beginning of next week. So yeah, guys, have a wonderful uh, have a wonderful weekend, um, and uh, stay safe. And I'll see you on Monday. Thank you very much, and bye bye.